Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Obviously a huge day for Bitcoin, went up nicely. The miners went up a lot too. Um, so we'll take a look at that uh, as well. But we'll also take a look at Iris Energy provided their January update along with Core Scientific. So we'll look at those guys, look at the mine numbers that I have for them. We'll get into all that. We'll look at all the other miners, see how they did today as well. So let's get into it here. But obviously, as always, not financial advice. And this is for your entertainment entertainment only do your own research don't fall for scams and spam posts get reported and deleted and i'm invested in the following companies for full disclosure and coins just so you guys know and let's take a look at bitcoin here so bitcoin obviously went up really nice today we've had over the weekend we were kind of uh, trading sideways here but the nice thing was the rsi was falling down even though we were trading sideways so that gave me a little bit of hope thinking that we may have a little pump here going into uh the monday and we did see that obviously uh, yesterday a little bit. And then today we obviously saw more of a pump as well in the afternoon hours, which was good to see. So we're at 43,856 right now. We did come close to our resistance here at 44,750. We'll see if we can get uh, the strength to go back up to it. The RSI was a little high, obviously, today, a little bit oversold. So I'd like to see that come down on that one hour chart. But if we look at the daily chart, we can see that we are also getting quite high on the RSI. We are at, what is it, 63 right now. Once we get up to above the 70 line here, that's when I start getting concerned that we are a little bit overheated on the price action of Bitcoin and we may need to cool down a little bit before we continue the trend up. I'm gonna have to possibly take all of my trend lines here and move them out a little bit more. Obviously a couple more days, a couple more weeks just to see where things end up at, see where we're bouncing between which lines. But right now, our resistance is 44,750. And we'll see if we can break through that in the next couple of days here. But otherwise, it looks really good right now on the chart setup. So no complaints there. Let's take a look at Ethereum really quick. Ethereum obviously broke our trend line here. It is above it now. It is at 3,113. Um, I'm thinking this is possibly our resistance here that we peaked a little bit and we're battling with it right now, right around the 3150 range. It looks like we've touched it a couple of times here on, on this daily chart here. So we'll see how this goes. RSI is still looking okay. We're in the middle. We're not overbought. We're not oversold. We're in the uh, uh, shaded area. So we're good for right now. But obviously we'll see how well this continues on. And then if we get possibly too overbought, then we have to have a little pullback on it. So coins did really well today, today as well. I'm not gonna get into the coins, but let's take a look at the mining stocks here. And then, uh, or actually, let's take a look at the hash rate really quick while we got it up here. So the hash rate is at, on the seven day average, it is 189 million right now. Uh, if we look at the raw values, we obviously saw some big drops here. And I think that was mainly because we had quite a bit of uh, the miners that are located in Texas where they were shutting down for, I think, a couple of days last week um, when there was high demand, obviously, for electricity. So they were shutting down to help the electrical system have enough uh, power for the residents in the state, so forth, so on. So that's probably what we're seeing there. So let's take a look at the actual miners, see how they did today. So Argo was up moderately 3.8% to 107. Uh, it has surpassed the 20 day moving average, which is good. It is still uh, on the RSI at 48.89. So in the average area, so not over, not oversold. And on the MACD, we're looking that we may have a positive trend here going up in price. So we'll see how this continues on Argo. Bid Farms was up nicely today, 8.92%. Eight um, it was up a lot higher. I think that was up well, almost up to like 12 or 13% up on the day, but it did pull back a little bit um, after going up quite a bit. And I think it was people taking profits. Um, so we'll see how this plays out. They are also above the 20 day moving average as well. Um, RSI is at 49.57, so right in the middle, so we're good there. And the MACD has also shown for us that we are possibly trending up higher here in the coming days. So we'll see how this plays out as well. They are up slightly in the after hours as well. Clean Spark was up 3.66% to 708. It did uh, have a red candle because it started up higher and then it came back down below it to finish out the day. Excuse me, but it is battling with the 20 day moving average right now. We'll see how this continues on. RSI is looking good, and so is the MACD. Let's take a look at Coors. Coors was up huge today. It was up uh, at, at its peak. I think it was almost up uh, like, like 16 or 17%, and then came back down. It was up 13% today to finish out the day at 1067, and it's down slightly now in after hours. It is above right now the 20 
50 and close to battling with the 200 day it looks like or the 100 day so we'll see how this plays out MACD is looking good as well it is showing us a positive trend up take a look at digihost digihost was down actually today uh, 0.23 percent to 427 it looks like it started the day out strong but then finished out weak towards the end it is above the 50 day moving average and the 20 day moving average uh, macd is showing that we are in a positive trend looks like right now and the rsi is uh, 55 so we're in the neutral territory dmg was up 5.26 percent to 50 cents it is battling with the 20 day moving average here rsi is at 4363 and the macd just signaled to us a green uh Green day looks like, so we may have that continue on, obviously, up, um, throughout the days going into positive territory as well. Hive on the candle finished out down, looks like, on the red, because it did obviously start out really well in the morning and then came back down. So it was only up 4%, but it was almost, I think, 12% up as well on the day. And then it came down to test the 20-day moving average, it looks like. Uh, it is up slightly in the after hours as well. Uh, and the RSI looks good, 45, and the MACD is showing, obviously, uh green green um, i don't know what you call those green bars so we're going up nicely so that should continue on hut 8 was up huge today 10.63 percent as well it was at 718 it is now battling with the looks like 200 day moving average here and possibly the 50 day moving average which are getting ready to cross here so we'll see how this plays out rsi is still looking good 54 and then macd is also looking good with nice green bars going to the upside iris Energy was up nicely as well today. It was up 16.81% to 15.36. Uh, on the R side, we're at 59, roughly 50, uh, 60. And the MACD is showing that we are kind of flat on the bars as far as the trend line. So we'd like to see those obviously tick up for the price to continue going up. And it is above the 50-day moving average. They obviously became uh, public back in November. So the more days of trading that we have, the more data we'll have and see where the 100 and the 200 day moving averages are as well. Going forward, Marathon was up 8.78% to 25.58. It is above the 20 day moving average as well. RSI is 46.71, so we're good there. And we do have positive green bars here on the MACD. So that's a good sign as well that we might uh, continue this uptrend here going forward. And then Mawson was up 13.79% to 594. It is above the 20-day moving average, uh, getting close to the 50-day moving average, which is going to be battling with it here shortly. RSI is still good at 46. Oh, it looks like it updated to uh, 53. And we do have good green bars on the MACD, which are signaling that we might be going back up higher as well. And finally, Riot. Riot was up 6.82%. We do have a red candle here because it started up higher to start the day pre-hours, obviously, and then it came down below that. That's why we have the candle here. But it is obviously up 6.2% uh, to 1770. RSI is looking good at 47. And the MACD is as well showing nice green bars here going to the upside. So that's all good. Okay, a lot of data on those guys. Uh, let's take a look at now, um, we'll take a look at Iris first, and then we'll take a look at core scientific data. And we'll look at my numbers as well. So this is going to be a little bit longer video than usual. And then we also got Argo, and then I'll do a video on Argo probably tomorrow sometime. Okay. So here's Iris Energy Limited announces monthly investor update for January 2022. Uh, pictures of their sites. Uh, this is a rendering, it looks like. Um, site plan, Panhandle, Texas, 17 exa hash potential, 600 megawatt figure two. And then we got specialized data center at Canal Flats, 0.8 exa hash, 30 megawatts figure. And then operating miners at Canal Flats, those are being obviously installed. And then we got construction at McKenzie, 1.5 exa hash, 50 megawatt. And then this is their main power transformer loaded on for rail to for transport to McKenzie. So that's coming on line here within the next couple of weeks, I'm guessing. And then the most important part here is the key highlights. So 600 megawatt binding connection agreement executed with AEP Texas and 19 million security deposit and connection fee, uh, fee paid. Company's power capacity expected to increase from 165 megawatts. 4.7 exahash to 765 megawatts, which is equivalent to 22 exahash. Uh, operations, so 804 petahash average operating hash rate in January, 8% increase. So a small increase, but nonetheless an increase. I know they, they had quite a few miners be getting delivered, so I'm surprised that they only got um, an 8% increase out of those. They obviously didn't get enough of those um, miners installed. Sorry, I got to clear my throat here. 
All right, better. Uh, so 126 Bitcoin mined, which was 1% increase, uh, generating monthly operating revenue of around 5 million. And then obviously the construction here. Oh, there we go. Construction ahead of uh, schedule McKenzie, 1.5 extra hash, 50 megawatts, British, Co uh, British Columbia, Canada, with commissioning for the first 9 megawatts now anticipated in early Q2 of 2022. And then full site grading and civil works underway in Prince George, 2.4 exa hash, 85 megawatts, British Columbia as well. Foundation work for the data center building is expected to commence by March 2022. So that's all good. Uh, let's see here, what else do we have here? So down here, they have a lot of information about their uh, different sites, but nothing that's uh, really uh, important to talk about here. Main important part is obviously their average hash rate here. So average operating hash rate was 657 in November, 748 in December. So they had a pretty nice increase there, almost uh, 90 bit hash increase. And they had a much smaller increase here of only about, what is that, 56 bit hash increase. So I'd like to see that number go up in the coming months. And then we have Bitcoin mined was 113 in November, 124 in December, 126 in January. Mining revenue obviously came down in January because the price of Bitcoin came down and obviously the hash rate went up. Important part here is operating January 2022. So they got 8,539 8, units in operation, 804 pet hash uh, up, um, operating right now. And they do have inventory in transit, uh, 2,605 and then inventory pending deployment. So they have a lot, uh, 7,337 miners that are pending deployment, basically pending being installed. So they do have a backlog of a lot of these getting in uh, to be installed. So that gives us a total, it looks like Q1 would be 9,126. And I'm not sure if that includes all of these guys here, uh, but 11,000 in Q2, Q3 would be 7,000, Q4 would be 27,000. And then you get a lot of them coming online in Q1, Q2, Q3 of 2023. So these guys obviously are going to be building for a long time here and getting things installed for at least the next year and a half or so. All right, so let's take a look at the numbers that I have for them. We'll get into Iris Energy. Okay, so we got Iris. Iris, I have them at 805 petahash, which is really close to what they're saying that they have 804, I believe they said. And the miners, I thought that these miners, these older ones would be removed by now. But they reported in that report uh, that they still have 2.5% of their total hash rate is the older, uh, less efficient miners. So that's kind of where I came up with roughly 23 beta hash on those still running. They have 513 miners at the 45 uh, terahash mark. So that gets us that. And then I have these miners here as well. And that gets us to the 8,539. I had to kind of change up the terahash on these miners to make the numbers work to where they have them about 804 petahash. But I have the latest ones that were installed this month running for 20 days roughly because it takes a while for them to get installed. Um, so you can only install, install a certain amount of uh, miners per day. But on average, it comes out to be that they would be running uh, 20 days or so uh, to get to the number here. And then we got the rest of these guys here for 31 days. So we're looking at 4.6 million uh, possible revenue with the Bitcoin price being at uh, January, which would have been 38,491, so 38,500 roughly. And this is what I'm calculating by. And if we look, obviously we'll add more miners in February when they come online. And going forward, we'll obviously have more accurate data because we're using daily uh, numbers for months instead of generic 30 days. So this will give us more accurate numbers going forward. They did obviously mine 126 Bitcoin, which was two more than last month, which is, was 1.6% increase on that. What else can I show you guys? So currently they are 5.36% operational of all their future hash rate growth that they have planned. Uh, they do have obviously 8,539 miners. So average uh, hash per miner is 94 terahash. And they didn't report anything as far as their BTC HODL. They may report that in their Q4 reports. I didn't look back. Uh, to find that out or not. Over here, we got them at uh, possibly this quarter being at around 14.3. If Bitcoin stays where it's at, hash rate stays where it's at, miners don't get installed, this is where they would be. 
Obviously, we're going to have more miners coming online here this quarter, so that's, that should get their number up. And if Bitcoin continues to go up, that number should go up as well. But looking at the whole year, if everything stayed the same, stock price should be around 1632 based on a 20 price earnings multiple for, with 75% net income from gross revenue, which will be around 60 million. But that is going to increase as well. So that is just kind of a ballpark figure. And then going forward in February, we'll actually see what their um, hash rate difference was and minor difference from month to month. And we'll get that calculated as well for all the months going forward. And then we can kind of compare the miners that way, see which one installed the most miners. Uh, what else can I tell you here? So currently, obviously, we, Iris, I believe, is supposed to report their Q, I think it's their Q4, but basically the October, November, December quarter numbers this week on the 9th. So we'll take a look at that, see how they provided. I have them for Q4 at about 19.6 million. So we'll see how close I am to that uh, based on what they report. I'd like to stay within 5% of this. If, um, to, you know, that's kind of my goal is on the old data is about 5%. The new data I want to be within, hopefully with 1%, but I'll be happy if I get it to within 2.5%. So we'll see how close I get on that. And based on the numbers that we have here, so we'll find out what the final quarter was in 2021. So we're using the last three quarters, which was uh, here in 2021, the last three quarters. And then we're using the latest number from this quarter, which was the 14.3 million. So we're getting a combined 49 million on that. And we're using the 50% uh, and 75% from net for net income from gross revenue. And we're looking at 891 to 1336, which right now the stock price is at... 15.36, so it's looking like it's a little bit overheated, and the price, uh, I should be using the price, uh, well, yeah, it's the price for the old quarter, so that's why, uh, that we're using for those numbers. So, 8.91, 13.36, so I think they still have, obviously, room to grow, but they are kind of getting a little bit uh, overheated, in my opinion, a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, we'll see how things play out, obviously, with the numbers that they report, but this is where I got them at right now. And we'll see how things play out. Uh, yeah, but otherwise, you know, a nice small increase, obviously, in Petahash this quarter for them. So we'll see how they do going forward into February and October, and then uh, February February and March. Uh, and then we'll obviously have a more uh, accurate quarter details on that. Uh, so let's get into cores. Uh, let me close this out. Okay, so cores or core scientific core scientific announces obviously their january 22 production updates so we'll get into this here really quickly they did provide their self-mining and uh, hosting mining as well so 100 1077 bitcoin mined in january and the company held 6373 bitcoins produced from operations as of january month and core scientific operated its own fleet of more than 75,000 bitcoin miners producing 7.5 exa hash so that was really good in addition to its self-mining fleet, as of January 31, Course Scientific provided infrastructure, technology, and operating support for a diverse group of customers representing 7.1 exahash. So obviously they've installed, uh, they've gotten their own hash rate way up compared to their customers' hash rate, which is good. And their January grid support. Um, so in the month of January, the company powered down a portion of its operations on four separate occasions. Um, aggregate, ag like, yeah, I can't speak. Aggregate electrical curtail curtailment for these events exceeded 1,100 megawatt hours. So I'm guessing this was probably more or less um, during the cold periods, during the cold days or cold nights that they were probably shutting down, um, I'm guessing for maybe 12 hours at a time when that was going on. So I have reduced them by two days, but we'll see if that was actually two days worth or three days when they provide more accurate numbers in their uh, Q4 numbers. Um, so we'll take a look at that. Is when that comes out, but that's kind of what I'm doing right now. So let's take a look at the numbers that I have for them. There isn't much else as far as uh, company information or things like that, but obviously a real nice increase here on them. So let's take a look at the numbers. So if we look at Core Scientific, so I got Core Scientific with uh, basically these miners now in operation. Started out with uh, just these here in January, and then we added obviously these miners here. So they added about uh, almost 9,000 miners and an increase of almost 900 petahash uh, just in the month of January alone, which is huge. Uh, so the nice thing, obviously, we can monitor this going forward. We'll see what their increase is like uh, from month to month. 
I had to increase the minor speed to 102 just to make the kind of numbers work a little bit here. Uh, and perhaps these were, the original ones that they had in here were 98 and a half, which is what I calculated when they originally provided information as far as how many miners they have and what their exahash was. Um, so those are always going to be a little bit fluid here until we get some final numbers from them. But I do have them at, obviously, what they reported at 7.5 exahash with these miners being installed now. And I do have these mining at 20 days because as they're getting installed, um, you're ramping up basically how much you're making. So it comes out to be about 20 uh, days out of the month for these two here as well. And then 29 for the ones that were already installed because basically they were shut down for possibly two days. Um, at, that's kind of what I'm calculating based on the four days that they had to shut down. So I'm guessing two days out of that, 12 hours at a time. And then going forward, we'll obviously have the numbers here on February 28, 31 in March, and they'll continue on. Also, for their hosting, I don't know what they're charging on the hosting. I'm guessing, um, I think it was 12% of revenue from that total. So this is kind of what I'm guessing at. I d won't know exactly if this is accurate until they provide their uh, Q4, was it the yeah, Q4 numbers uh, for their quarter. Once we get that, I think I can make this a little bit more accurate, but that's where I'm at right now. And that's why we're getting the numbers here. So based on that information, I have them making possibly 44.6 million in January. And then as more miners get installed, we'll obviously have an increase here in February. And in March, obviously, we're already seeing an increase here in February because we have a higher Bitcoin price on it as well. So we do have them at 1,077 1, Bitcoin mines, so a 33 more Bitcoins mined than the previous month, which is a 3.16% increase from the pre previous uh, month. And then if we look at the numbers here, we can see that they are going to be possibly making 617 million if nothing changed. Bitcoin stayed where it's at, hash rate stayed where it's at. This, would, this is basically where they would be uh, earning for the end of the year. But we do have them at, uh, so the price to earnings, uh, price to earnings, uh, how do I do this? So this is price to earnings, uh, not e, pata hash, uh, based on future hash rate. So this is the earnings divided by hash rate, and you're getting at 3,000. So this is really low compared to the other miners. So I have to change this around a little bit because I am including their hash rate for hosting in here as well. So I may do two separate tables for them, one for hosting, one for their own self-mining. And that way I can get a little bit more accurate data here. So that's something that I have to work on. Uh, but based on if they, everything stays the same, we're looking at a price to earnings multiple of 20, 75% net income from gross revenue from 617. We're looking at a stock price around 29.22. They are now at 1067. Shares outstanding is about 317 million, give or take. Um, it's hard to figure out exactly how many they have. Hopefully we'll get some more updated numbers. But based on a market cap of 3.3, divide that by the 10, you're getting uh, shares outstanding. And then, uh, based, I don't have uh, obviously the data for the previous three quarters on them. We do have some data, but I'm looking at 917 to 1375, basically, and which is in range of where they are right now. So I still think that they are undervalued. I don't think the market knows how to value them just yet because we don't have a lot of um, quarterly data on them. They obviously came via SPAC here last month. So as more data becomes available, I think we'll have a better understanding as far as how many shares are outstanding and then where we should uh, basically uh, price them at. But right now, I think they're in line with that, a little bit undervalued in my opinion as well, based on what they are mining. I mean, these guys are pretty big. I think right now they're the biggest out of the bunch that I cover here as far as hash rate is concerned. So I would expect them to have a little bit higher uh, market cap than they do right now. Um, obviously, Bitcoin HODL position 6,373, so that's roughly almost 295 million. And then HODL to market cap ratio is 8.7% of their market cap is their HODL position. And each share right now has basically 93 cents of Bitcoin's worth in it. But let me see if there's anything else. I think that's it. I mean, they still have a lot of miners, obviously, to, to get installed. Uh, the future hash rate is going to be huge. They're supposed to be at 32 exahash when everything is said and done, including their own hash rate, self-mining, and hosting. They're currently at 14.6 combined, so they're about 44%, and they, I'm sure going to announce something down the road here that they're getting more uh, miners installed or something like that. So we'll see how this all plays out, but 
great January for our core. Um, a lot of miners getting installed and a huge increase in hash rate. Um, when you're that big, um, you know, even if you install that many, it doesn't seem that big, but it's, it's huge. Um, to get that many miners installed is not an easy feat to do. So congrats to them. Obviously, great month for them. Same thing for um, Iris Energy. You know, they're getting stuff done. I wish they would install the miners a little bit faster, but we'll see how February works out. Okay, it's been a long one. A lot of details, a lot of things. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments down below. Um, if you enjoyed the video, obviously hit the like button, subscribe button, and uh, notification bell helps me out tremendously. That's all I ask from you guys. I goes, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and we'll get into the next one on uh, Argo tomorrow, and then we'll see if anybody else provides their numbers. And then I think we'll have a couple left after that. And then we can do the minor versus minor comparison, see where everybody's standing at, and uh, go from there. So hope you guys have a great night. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, bye.